أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد ولا أهل بيت إيه الطيبين الطاهر المعصومين ولا نتدام تلباقي على عدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين We have been looking at a brief review of Surah Ar-Rahman This is a surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with the name Ar-Rahman reflecting his uh, comprehensive mercy over the universe and talks about various uh, blessings. We looked at the Quran, the creation of human beings, the issue of bayan as a reflection of human ability to think and, you know, uh, shares ideas and thoughts. The sun and the moon, the herbs, the trees, the sky and the mizans, three of them, the earth, the fruits, the dates, the grain, vegetables and Last night we looked at the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the creation of human beings and the jinn. <clears throat> to continue with that, um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the sun and the moon, and then of course he talked about the sama and the arz, everything is connected to one another. There is a balance in uh, how the system works. And going back to it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now again talks about the uh, seasons that t- take place on the earth. And that is reflected by ayat number 17. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbul Mashriqain wa Rabbul Maghribain. The Lord of the two Easts and the Lord of the two Wests. Now in English, you can't, you can't have ruler to east and west, but you know, we just put it there, because that's what it is in in Arabic there. Um, The term Mashriqain and Maghribain is from Mashriq and Maghrib. When you put Ye and Noon at the end of a noun, you get dual in Arabic. For example, we know Hassan and Hussein. What is Hassanain? Hassanain means to Hassan. Or for example, when we look at the term in uh, the famous hadith of Ghadir, So wherever you have ye and noon at the end, in a noun, it refers to dual. Saqalain means two uh, important or worthy or weighty uh, things. And so here also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, you know, describes himself as the Lord of Mashriqain wa what does it mean? Mashriq basically is uh, the place from where the sun rises. Sharaqa, Shuruq. And Maghrib is the place where the sun sets. And so that, that's from Gharaba and Ghurub. Um, the reason why Mashriq is known as normally we consider East to be Mashriq and west to be Maghrib because in relation to the sun, that's the place where the sun comes up. And when you look at the place where the sun goes down, from wherever you are, it is on your west. And that's how we use this term Mashriq and Maghrib. It's a relative term. You know, um, if you are India or Pakistan, the east and west is different. If you are here in Canada, for you east and west is different. For them, um, you know, Canada is on the west. And when we sit down here, for us, the west is, you know, Japan. Whereas in English, they would say it's, uh, in our books, they write Far East. Or when they say Middle East. These are all relative terms. Um, and so this is, this, is, and this is where we see in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses the term Rabb for himself here because this is, this is a surah which talks about his Rahmaniyat and his mercy. 
So look at, look, look at these uh, three words, mashriq, mashriqain, and mashariq. Mashriq is singular, mashriqain is dual, and mashariq is the plural. Then you have maghrib, maghribain. You know, why do we call maghrib and isha maghribain? Because it's two things which we combine, uh, or zuhrain. Again, it's the same uh, grammar uh, method used. And Maghrib is the, is the plural. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about this uh, in three different ayat of Quran. And even during the days of Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa salam, there was a Khariji by the name of Abdullah ibn al Kawwa. Good name, ibn al Kawwa, at least from the Urdu perspective, you know. It really reflected his personality. A very, you know, somebody who was a munafiq, basically. And, but instead of his hatred and his nifaq, at least, you know, when he asked questions uh, of Amir al muminin you know, we got the opportunity to, get the, to hear the answers. And uh, there is a very lengthy discussion. It's many different places he has come in the, in the life of Amir al muminin um, Sheikh Tabrasi in his kitab Al-Ihtijaj is a lengthy conversation of Ibn Kawwa with Amir al muminin And in one place, this fellow says, you know, uh, you talk about Quran all the time. And you glorify the Quran, but I see there are contradictions in the Quran. And Amir al muminin said, where do you see the contradictions? And he said, well, in one place, uh, you know, it says, Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghrib. Allah is the Lord of the East and the West. In another ayat, which is from Surah Rahman, he says, Rabbul Mashriqain wa Rabbul Maghribain is the Lord of two Easts and two West. And then there is a third ayat in Surah Ma'arij, Surah, uh, surah number 30, ayat 40, uh, where Allah basically describes himself as Rabbul Mashariq wal Maghrib, the Lord of many, many Mashriq and many, many Maghrib. So he says, you know, there's contradiction here. You know, either he's Rabbul Mashriq wal Maghrib or Mashriqain wal Maghribain or Mashariq wal Maghrib. You can't, you can't have all these three. And this is where Amir al muminin says, you know, it is how you look at it. It is in your, you know, the perspective of that. And um, the response that Amir al muminin gave basically was that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described in Surah Shu'ara, Surah number 26, Ayat number 28 is Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghrib. That ayat is talking about the general direction of East and West. You know, in, in, even in Toronto, you know, we know where is East and where is West side of the uh, city. And so when we look at the general direction, that's where the ayat is saying that Allah is the Lord of the East as well as the West. Then Amir al says, Amma qawluhu rabbul mashriqain wa rabbul maghribain, referring to this ayat, that, which is in Surah Rahman. Amir al says, فَإِنَّ مَشْرِقُ الشِّطَاءَ عَلَىٰ حَدَّ وَمَشْرِقُ الصَّيْفِ عَلَىٰ حَدِّ That if you look at the extreme points from where the sun rises, you know, and sets, um, you will see that there are two extreme points in the summer and the winter. So looking at those cardinal points, according to the seasons, you know, the mashriq could be two, and the maghrib also could be two. And then Amir al-Mu'minin says, أَمَّا قَوْلُهُ رَبُّ الْمَشَارِقِ وَالْمَغَارِبِ You know, east and west, the lord of the east and west, of many, many mashriq and many, many maghrib, this refers to the mashriq and the maghrib of every day. Scientifically, if you look at if you sit down, uh, there are some, you know, computer programs also which can give you a, a true stimulation of the sunrise or sunset of your own city. If you check that, you will see that although, you know, the direction would be the same where the sun is setting on the west of your city. But every day, if you check, you will see it has moved few degrees, you know, away. And so every day the point of rising of the sun as well as the setting of the sun is different. And when you look at that, especially if you look at between the two extremes, 
the cardinal points of the east and the west of the summer and winter, that's where Amir al-Mu'minin says, you get Rabbul Mashariq wal Maghrib, fa inna laha thalatha mi'a wa sitin burjan. It can have 360 different angles where the sun would set and the sun would rise from. Salawat from the Iqbal. Uh, this, this is the, the greatness of Amir al-Mu'mineen, you know, sometimes uh, we hear some from Muslims to say, yeah, he was a very good person, a very learned person. Baba, learn, learned person, what is this? <laughs> you know, on, on that level, even our uh, ulama are very learned. You don't compare Amir al-Mu'mineen on that basis. You know, he basically is the source, he is the Baba Madinat al-Ilm. Any question I, you ask him. He doesn't have to go and say, okay, I'll research and look into it and then get back to you. Or you will never heard. No one has ever heard from Amir al-Mu'minin la alam that I don't know. Although he says, he says, do not be ashamed to say, I don't know if you don't know. If somebody asks you a question and you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. At least you, have this, you will have the motivation to go and learn. But Amir al-Mu'min himself, he never ever said, I don't know. And this is where we see once the second Khalifa asked him. You know, and that's also an interesting conversation where he says, you know, that how come whenever people ask you things, you just respond right away? And Amir al-Mu'min says, how many fingers do you have? He said, five. And Imam said, well, you didn't think about it. You just said five. He said, well, this is very obvious. But Amir al-Mu'min said, for me, everything else is obvious. <laughs> the way... <coughs> the way you know you have five fingers, whatever question you ask me, I'll be able to respond to it. And th this is where we see that, you know, this person comes with trying to prove that there is contradiction in the Qur'an by using these ayat, Rabbul Mashriq wal Maghrib, Rabbul Mashriqain wa Rabbul Maghribain, وَرَبِّ الْمَشَارِقِ وَالْمَغَارِبِ And this is where Amir al-Mu'minin says, no, if you look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this system, the solar system, the way it works, you will know that there is no contradiction. This is based on وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمْرُ بِحُسْبَانِ There is a husband, there is a hisab, there is a calculation, and there is a system in how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created things. Salaam alaykum wa This has very much to do with the issue of, you know, Mashriqain wal Maghribain, even to the, you know, seasons that we get uh, in, 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 in a year. Basically, that's the seasons depend on the uh, hours of the daylight. In summer, we have longer uh, days, and in winter, we have shorter. And that everything depends on the rotation of the earth around the sun and the tilt of the earth around its own axis. And that's how we get the seasons, and the seasons become the basis of this earth becoming the source of our, uh, our food. You know, in winter it goes into kind of a, uh, you know, uh, dead, and then it becomes alive again in the spring. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps this system always alive for us. And, and this is where we uh, come to the next ayat, where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ So what of your Lord's bounties will you both deny? Referring to the jinn and ins. And the response from the sixth imam, the way he has taught us, لَا بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ آلَائِكَ رَبِّ أُكَذِّبِ That, O oh my Lord, I do not deny any of your uh, blessings that you're given to us. I would like to go back to uh, the point of reflection I had yesterday. Uh, when we looked at the ayats dealing with the creation of the human being and the jinn, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have created the human beings from the earth and we have created the jinn from the fire. 
And the point was about learning the lesson of humility. Our origin is from Chak. We are Chaki, we are earthly uh, beings. And the jinn, they have been created from the fire. And these issues should not become the basis of superiority of one over the other. You know, if you look at the concept of takabbur, as I said yesterday, shaitan is the example of the first sin that we see in the history of, uh, you know, divine revelation. And the basis of that sin was this takabbur, the sense that ana khayrun minhu, that Allah, why should I do sajda to Adam? I'm better than him. You know, khalaqtuhu min teen, you created him from the earth and you created me from the fire. The fire is superior to the, to the earth. And this is where we have to realize that, you know, the importance of a human being is not in the physical uh, structure of a person. It doesn't matter whether we are, you know, uh, created from the earth or the fire, the way Iblis was created, the jinn. No, it doesn't matter whether we are white or black, you know, we are Aram, uh, Arab or Ajam. It doesn't matter whether we are Easterner or Westerners. It doesn't matter whether Sayyid or Sheikh or Koja or non Koja. All these differences that we see is not the basis of any fadilat. And that's where we had to realize that, you know, all these differences actually reflect the diversity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see in his creation. There are ayat where he says, you know, in the ikhtalaf, in the difference or variety of the languages and colors that you see in human race, you will see the signs of my power and glory. And so the diversity itself is ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to be, you know, uh, looked upon as an ayat and a sign which will make us more subservient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the example of Adam. The problem with shaitan was that he didn't realize whom he is talking to. He's talking to his own creator, to the creator of Adam. Allah is the one who ordered him to do sajda. And he says, well, he is made from the earth and I am made from the fire. I am more superior. Why should I do sajda to him? Basically, if, if you see, his argument was that I believe in you, you as the creator. You are the only one who is worthy of being worshipped. And so I'm not going to do sajda to anyone. And this is where we, we have to realize that sometimes we basically fool ourselves by saying, well, yeah, the Sharia says this and that, but I will doing, I'll do the way I think it. Think about it. The way I feel it. No, there's nothing like what I feel about it. The issue of fasting. You know, we hear this, uh, well... Quran says very clearly in Surah Baqarah, the second ayat uh, which came after the order about fasting, it says, but those of you who are uh, in kana maridhan aw ala safarin, if you are not feeling well or you are traveling, then some other days you will fast, other than the month of Ramadan. People say, well, you know, those are the days when people used to travel by camels. It was difficult. There was mashaqqa and zahmat in that. These days, you know, mashallah, we can sleep in these uh, comfortable uh, first class cabins in uh, Emirates. You've just seen the pictures, all, of course. Uh, and so, you know, uh, so what's, what is the point? I still would like to have my, why should I miss my Ramazan? You know, this is how they say. That spirit of Ramazan, why should I wait for Shawwal and do Qaza over there? The question is, who is asking you to do the fasting of Ramadan? You yourself or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He is the one who is telling you that if you are ala safarin, you are traveling, then don't fast. Fast some other times. He is asking if you, give you, he is making things easy for you. And you are saying, no, 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 I'll, I'll decide on my own. This is where we have to realize that shaitan made the same mistake. He was saying to Allah, I will do only sajda to you and not to Adam. Also, of course, the basis was that arrogance, that I'm better than him. You know, here the question should not be what I feel. The question is, I have to do the ibadat the way he wants me to do his ibadat. 
And if we have that sense, then we become the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat wa alaykum Just, you know, uh, it's important even to reflect to the origin of our creation from earth, from teen or turab. Different terms we looked uh, yesterday at the ayat that how Allah describes our origin. And that itself is a point of reflection for our humility towards one another and especially when we interact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me end with a statement from Amir al Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. A very beautiful, you know, and again, this is, this is Ali's, only he can do this. The way he puts things in such a, you know, uh, summarized form, where he says, Ajibtu libn Adam. He says, I am surprised of this children of Adam. Awwaluhu nutfa wa akhiruhu jifa wa huwa qa'imun baynahuma wi'a'an lil ghaid. He says, I am surprised at this human being. His beginning is this sperm drop. There is a nutfa, nothing else. At the end, he is a jifa, a dead body, a corpse. And in between those points, what is he? He is a carrier of waste. Wa'a'an lil ghaid. Ghaid is the waste. He is carrier of the waste. Thumma yatakabbar. And then still he is arrogant. Look at your origin. Look at your end. And if you want to really think more about it. When he uses this term. Nutfa. That is an element of najasat. Ayn najis. Murda. Dead, dead body again. Even if they are your, your own father. If you touch. You also have to go and do ghusl. Ghusl masamayyid. It's najis. So beginning is najasat, end is najasat until, until the ghusl is done. In between Amir al says, you are wi'an lil ghaid, you are a carrier of waste, thumma yatakabbar. And still you allow yourself to be arrogant. So just think about it. You know, this is how we had to realize that we have to become the true followers of Abu Turab. You know, when we say Ali, he is Abu Turab is the father of the earth. Because he was very humble to those who were the true followers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fila akhirati hasana wa qina wa barahmatika ya rahman rahman.